Hey, and once again, welcome to the Shadow Gallery. I am, as always, your host, James Donnelly. And tonight, we're still going to be talking comic books, but this is going to be a different conversation because we're not really going to be talking about actual physical comic books. We're going to be talking about comic book characters. And if you can hear that noise in the background, that's my dryer, so don't worry about it. If you can't hear it, great. Don't worry about it. So, my, I, I was just, I was in the bathroom, and, I was in the bathroom, and, you know, okay, you probably have, and if you don't, shame on you, you probably have some trade paperbacks that you have in your bathroom, if you're a big comic book fan, because you enjoy reading when you're in the bathroom. You know, I'm sure that some of you just probably do your business and get out, And but I like to sit until my legs are numb sometimes and just and just read and read and read and read and read because you're by yourself, it's relatively quiet, and it's just, you know, it's it's a nice moment because it's, it's also really the only thing you can do. You can't play video games. Well, I mean, if you have your fucking smartphone or your iPod or whatever like that, I'm sure you could. But anyway, getting off the point. So I was in the bathroom, and I was, I have this, this stack of single issues, and I call them, you know, like cheapo single issues, nothing expensive or anything like that. And, you know, a couple of trades in there. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, now, which, it just popped into my head, which superhero do you identify with most? Or most want to be? And that was the question I found myself asking as I was washing my hands and everything like that and, and leaving. So I was looking at the stack of comics and there's you know a couple different titles in there. Now, okay, I'm pretty sure that most people, most people from our age group, from our kind of geek group, probably want to be this guy right here want to be Batman. Why? Because Batman is the coolest motherfucker out there. I mean, you know, he's got the gadgets, he's got the attitude, he's got everything. He's the whole package. He's super smart. He's incredibly strong. He has honed himself to physical perfection. Okay, it's no, it's certainly no secret that there's a part of me that wants to be Batman, but. In order to become Batman, you have to go through this really horrific psychological trauma. And that's, that's not good. Uh, so, in some ways, I want to be Batman, but in most ways, I do not want to be Batman. If, if I could be... But, see, the whole thing is that you take away that tragedy. You take away the tragedy of him losing his parents. You take away the edge that the character has. You know, even when... Uh, Dick Grayson was Batman most recently, at least, okay, he could still be Batman because he also lost his parents in a similar fashion. And that's why he became Robin, and ultimately why he became Nightwing, and then became Batman for a little while, and now he's Nightwing again. And I just thought to myself, well, you know, actually, the, strangely enough, the first superhero that I ever wanted to be was Spider-Man. And I thought to myself, well, why? Why do I? Why would I want to be Spider-Man? Because again, tragedy. But he still had, you know, a, 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 a parent figure in Aunt May. But she was always frail, and she was, you know, at least, you know, in 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 the comic books that I grew up with, you know, with like the Romita, uh, the you know, Romita Senior uh, issues of Spider-Man and Roy Thomas and so on and so forth, Jerry Conway. You know, it was she was always very frail. I remember this. You know, when she like was going to marry Doc Ock back in that run, and you know, there's this little point where you know a tentacle reaches behind her, you know, and just like you know, you know, pinches her nerve right here, you know, like the Vulcan, you know, like a Vulcan nerve pinch, and just you know, she's like, oh, and you know, and and, uh, and Peter's always worried about that. He can't tell his, he can't tell Aunt May that he's really Spider Man because it's going to it's going to kill her, and I and and of course recently, more recently in recent years, she's ultimately she's figured out who he is, and 
uh, she's really kind of had no problem with it. And then, of course, she actually took to that whole kind of writing campaign where she, you know, was writing, writing letters to the Bugles saying that she was going to cancel her subscription. I, I, okay, no, I actually, I don't remember if that was Ultimate Spider-Man or just regular Amazing Spider-Man. But, you know, so, I mean, that whole thing was, was bullshit. But I wanted to be, I wanted to be Spider-Man because I was really, when I was a kid, when I was a little kid, you know, four or five years old, I was really interested in science because my father was an engineer. And he had all this cool stuff in the, in the, in the basement and... You know, he didn't have like a chemistry set or anything like that, but he had all, you know, all these things that were very science-minded. You know, they, they were mathematical or they were, you know, whatever, you know, chemical compounds and so on and so forth. I mean, but I'm talking about like, you know, WD-40 and shit like that. You know, he didn't have, you know, the, you know, the equation for vibranium or anything like that. He just, you know, he was, he was a man's man. And, but I, you know, I felt, you know, because you know, everybody's telling me, you know, like, you're smart and, you know, you got this really high IQ and everything like that. But that, again, I'm a kid, okay? And so I wanted to be Spider-Man. Because, you know, Spider-Man could, you know, he he talked smack to the bad guys. He, he, you know, spun his webs and he swung around on them. And this is, you know, this is during the uh, the, the era of, like, 1967 cart. Well, I mean, that's before my time, obviously. But when they were replaying and it was in syndication, the 1967 cartoon... And you could watch that, and that's how I generally kind of came to relate to uh, to Spider-Man. And because I just felt very science-minded, even though I'm not, you know, it's like salt is salty. That's like I, I that's how much I know science. You know, I, I'm horrible, horrible at science and math because I'm not a, like I'm. It's it's strange because I can be like emotionally logical, which I know is a very strange uh, kind of oxymoron, but it's like, I, I can think logically, but only when it comes to issues of like high intense, like very intense emotional situations. Um, so, and then, you know, it's like, well, you know, I, I think that we're all, you know, different superhero characters throughout our lives. I mean, it's, it's hard to relate to a character like Superman because He's so innately good, and I think we are, we want, we, we kind of want to be that good, but we also, I mean, in the kind of, you know, cynical world that we ultimately live in, and I think that, you know, a lot of us grew up in, in the 70s and the 80s and in the 90s, that, you know, the cynicism just kept ramping up and up and up and up, and now we're in this ultra-cynical postmodern era but we're actually trying to recapture some of that innocence at the same time. So it's, it's a really strange time to be alive and be aware of things that are going on around us. But, you know, so, but Superman, you know, he's, he's so good. You know, he doesn't use his powers for evil. He doesn't use his powers for personal gain. He just helps people whenever he can. And that's, you know, but he has no reason to other than he has the power. And that's, you know, like I said, that's a great thing to aspire to. But again, I think that's why a lot of people don't really relate to Superman as a character, because nobody is the only survivor of their planet, because we all live here. Unless you're unless you are an alien, your planet did explode and you're watching this, then welcome. But and then, you know, I think as you get older, you just start you start to discover certain things about yourself. And there are different things that you aspire to be or different things that you associate yourself with being. So, you know, I kind of gave up the idea of, you know, I don't think I'd be a very good bat, you know, I, I would be a terrible Batman because I don't have that kind of emotional trauma where I feel the need to go out and avenge uh, the deaths of my parents by making sure that something like that never happens to anybody else. Ultimately, that's Batman's main motivator. I don't think I could be Spider-Man because, again, I'm not very science-minded, and I don't, you know, obviously, you know, there there's a superpower involved there. Um, you know, I can't be like some of my, you know, even like you know some of my most favorite characters, like the Shadow, because again, it, it's too the the idea of being the Shadow. It's too abstract because he's almost more of a symbol rather than uh, just a human being. And then it kind of hit me as I went through life 
and became older. And it hit me who I felt I related to best and felt that I emulated. And it might surprise you, but I'll, I'll show you. I wanted to be, I feel like I relate most to this guy. That's right. I feel that I relate most to Cyclops. Now these, yes, they are the, the prop uh, redesigned from X-Men 2. I used to have uh, the first X-Men film goggles that were part of a kind of a cheap costume that I actually wore on uh, back in 2001 for Halloween. And they were the big ones. And I could actually wear my glasses around it, which was really great. So I could actually, I actually like drove in them one night. It was fun as hell. But, and I have actually a pair of like those uh, funky red uh, sunglasses that are, they're, they're not, they're, it's like a cheap knockoff of what was you, what the Oakleys that he wore in the movie. And I really wanted the Oakleys bad, but they're, they're like 200 bucks. Uh, these were a lot cheaper. So but this, you know, it has the whole case and everything like that. And this is really cool. You know, it has actually the technical specs of the, the visor in there. Um, but Cyclops, yeah. Why? Well, this again goes back to when I was younger. And this was about, I don't know, 1987. 86 or 87. And the reason that I felt, I actually... When I was in, I went to California for the first time. I was uh, 12 years old. And so that was 1987. It was winter of 1980, uh, winter of 1980, well, it was Ju uh, July, uh, god damn it, it was January of 1988. And I went out to California, first flight, first time I've really been to, you know, first time I've been to California. And we went to, uh, Knott's Berry Farm, which is also, you know, it's a, a flavor of, you know, it's a brand of jam, but it's also, it has uh, an amusement park there. And in the amusement park, they had for 10 bucks, these sunglasses, and they were, they were red, and they were big, and they were square, and they looked like the ruby quartz lenses that Cyclops wore during his X-Factor year. And I got them, and I didn't care if I looked like a dork. And I remember coming back, and one of my other friends who was a big comic book fan was like, "Oh, dude, you got Cyclops glasses." I'm like, "Yeah," and it's like, "Why? Why? I mean, it's like, why do you like Cyclops so much?" I'm like, "Because he wears glasses." I'm just gonna let that wash over you for a few moments. That is kind of one of the primary reasons that I associate with. Cyclops. Uh, also because Cyclops, while being very sure of himself, is also very unsure of himself. Because I think that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pretty smart guy, but I also have this really shitty job. Uh, I don't have a college degree, I don't intend to go back to college, but I know that I'm good enough to attend college and to graduate and probably do very, very well. But I just don't want to do it. So, because, I mean, and especially as, you know, like, you saw his character grow throughout the years, and, of course, most recently with Joss Whedon's run, and how awesome Cyclops was, and how it ultimately came to be that it was actually his decision to not control his optic blasts. And all these things just really resonated with me. It's like there's this assuredness, but this absolute unassuredness. And that's why I feel more like Cyclops than any other superhero that's out there. Not comic book character, but superhero. So I'd be really interested to hear your guys' thoughts. So why don't you strike back below and see what you have to say. And, you know, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Donnelly92274, uh, on Tumblr, the Shadow Gallery Comics dot tumblr dot com or just shadow gallery comics dot tumblr dot com it might be either i can never remember and of course i'm on facebook so this is james donnelly for the shadow gallery 
aka Cyclops, for right now, signing off. We'll see you next time. Ah!